I assume uh, uh, the cases that have been through, I've gone through uh, for the past few months uh, in PICU Penang. Um, uh, happy CNY and uh, thanks for those who on call during the period. Um, I'm not going to share something very high five about PICU uh, management, but I want to share a very interesting case that I uh, managed during one of my on call in Penang. So um, I choose this topic because uh, after the MCOs, a lot of people uh, running around and bringing their child to Penang and uh, Langkawi. You can see so many people in Penang now. And I'm talking about these uh, incre incredibly stunning and dangerous creatures in the ocean, which as the, patient uh, as the picture show, I'm talking about jellyfish sting. So I will start off with a case presentation and uh, subsequently talk about some literature review about the uh, uh, proposed management. So I have this 11-year-old boy, a previously healthy child, alleged a jellyfish stung uh, during a swimming in uh, Batu Fringi in the mid of uh, December during the school holiday. He had a sudden electrical sensation over the right hand as well as the both feet. So he was immediately brought to the nearest health site and was treated with uh, hydrocortisone, pimiton, and he was discharged home because he don't have any systemic uh, symptoms at, at that time. So uh, he was monitored at home. The, his mom is a nurse in our, uh, our Penang GH hospital, it's at the adult site. So he was monitored at home. After a round third day post uh, jellyfish stung, he started to have this uh, dusky discoloration over all the fingers of right hand, as well as a swollen uh, bilateral feet. He had uh, no systemic uh, symptoms. Uh, there's no uh, difficulty in breathing. There's no abdominal crankiness. And uh, <clears throat> he has no seizure or any chest pain. So he, he was brought to a district hospital and uh, uh, he was referred to me uh, from ED level. And uh, <clears throat> when I actually received the referral, I'm quite uh, stunned because I actually have very limited experience on what to do on a jellyfish sting patient, especially uh, a patient with no systemic involvement, but he had uh, ischemia extremities. So um, the decision is to take over to our site and uh, to start on a special medication called Inopros. Um, It caused me some, uh, it actually triggered me to read more about this uh, jellyfish thing. And uh, because we don't have the Inopros in, in our hospital. So it's a very limited stock all around Malaysia. It's only available in those hospitals with have rheumatologists. So we managed to get some uh, stocks from our adult rheumatologist and uh, hence uh, the next morning he was started on IVI heparin infusion together with Alopros infusion. And uh, he tolerated the infusion well. There's not much of side effects from the uh, Alopros infusion and you can see gradual improvement in terms of the color as well as in terms of the function of the right hand. And uh, later on, I will show you some pictures. And uh, we managed to get back his uh, radio and ulnar pulses after five days on Ilopros. And uh, we attempted to off the Ilopros after a week because of uh, in, in view of uh, clinical improvement as well as uh, that's so limited stock that we have. But unfortunately, uh, we have repeated the ultrasound. It showed a smaller vascular caliber and the right index finger become more and more dusky. Hence, we have to uh, uh, sort out the stocks and restart the Ilopros. So this is the day one when I received him from the district hospital. You can see from the picture, the right hand uh, uh, apparently very, very uh, dusky compared to the left hand. The right hand is the, 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 the place that gonna bite by the jellyfish. So the CRT was prolonged of all fingers. The right palms are all uh, discolored and uh, we, can, we cannot feel the radiant and ulnar pulses. Uh, the second picture showed the sting mark uh, the linear stripes of tentacles print on the left lower limb. And you can comparing the both uh, right and left uh, lower limb, the left is more swollen and the left lower limb, the entire limb are cold. The right side is still warm, but also more swollen, also developed swelling already. So we did a bedside ultrasound Doppler. Uh, there is no flow. There's only a monophasic flow from the right radial and the right ulnar artery. But the by the, the brachial artery is uh, okay, we can have a triphasic waveform. So he was proceeded with CTA of the right upper limb. 
we can see a long segment of non-ophacification of a right radial artery and ulnar artery um, reported as maybe secondary to vasospasm, but they cannot rule out uh, uh, any thrombus. And at the same time, the patient had the hypertension and uh, we proceeded with renal uh, Doppler ultrasound. The vessels are normal. There's no evidence of renal artery stenosis and the echoes are normal. So he was uh, alloprost for a uh, total six days. And uh, clinically, uh, the hands become warmer and uh, we can feel bilateral uh, radiate and uh, uh, we can feel the both radiant and ulnar pulses after five days on iloprost. CRT improved, um, managed to get back the saturation, the SpO2 detection over the some of the fingers, and the BPs are well controlled with low dose of nifedipine. But uh, as I have said, um, I have to win off the iloprost because of limitation of the stock. So these are the pictures. Uh, this is a picture where uh, we you, you can see very obviously the palms are more red and the color is better of all the digits and uh, the digits are more warm after we started the island pros. But unfortunately, after I off the island pros for two days, um, the, the right hand become more and more swollen. He developed the bullous formation over the dorsums and the palm. And at the same time, uh, we we notice the right index finger become dusky again, although the pulses are still well felt. So we repeated the ultrasound Doppler. It's a formal ultrasound Doppler, and we notice it's a significant drop in the vascular caliber. Hence, uh, thanks to our pharmacist, we, we memang have to sort out all the medication from all over Malaysia, and we managed to get some stock of iloprost from the adult site in Selayang Hospital. So we restarted uh, iloprost. Over a time frame of three weeks, he actually uh, we managed to salvage all the fingers. Uh, perfusion is good, and SpO2 detected in all uh, five fingers, and uh, the radial and the ulnar pulses remain strong. And uh, we have done a serial ultrasound Doppler. The size of the caliber remain uh, static. So uh, the decision is to win off the iloprost after total duration of three weeks. It's a slow winning uh, to prevent a rebound like what we have uh, experienced the other day. And uh, eventually, we managed to uh, salvage all fingers and he was managed to be discharged after a month's stay in uh, PICU as well as a general ward. So I'm going to talk about uh, jellyfish and venomation. It's a very common incident in the coastal area all over the world. And although only a few species contain tentacles, but all species contain nematocysts. So nematocysts upon skin contact, they actually produce toxins and causes local reaction, which involve the phospholipase A2 pathway, which lead to pain, uh, skin necrosis, as well as swelling. Uh, most of the jellyfish and venomation is usually harmless and cause very mild symptoms. But in the rare instances, a uh, few types of jellyfish may manifest as a toxic syndrome, which includes CNS involvement, uh, where patient can present it with status epilepticus, or some of the patient can present it with uh, hypertension and capillopathy, as well as uh, there is multiple delayed multi-system effects of the toxin. So the spectrum of uh, severity of this jellyfish-induced vessel spasm ranges from Raynaud phenomena or uh, to finger necrosis or even a uh, very bad gangrenous which require amputation. So uh, almost a million of species of uh, jellyfish are benign, but uh, almost approximately 70 species of jellyfish are extremely toxic to humans, where these nematocytes can actually uh, produce toxin and release to their prey. So how it, uh, how it released the venom? The jellyfish has this stinging mechanism uh, in the form of venom containing nematocyte. So the tentacles that you've seen, there's multiple small, small nematocysts inside which can discharge a multiple factor, whether it's a necro, dermatonecrotic factor, neurotoxic factor, hemolytic factor, or even a cardiotoxic factor. So once they sting, they will actually trigger a tubules which they penetrate our skin surface and when it anchor, it will then release the venom. Um, there are many, many types of jellyfish, but uh, Basically, oh. brought, huh? huh? 
So basically, uh, this jellyfish are divided into uh, two main broad types, uh, whether it's multi tentacled or single tentacled. So the multi tentacled type of jellyfish, uh, they will cause very severe um, immediate pain upon contact, but uh, very uncommonly they cause muscle pain or back pain. The general systemic effect will cause either arrhythmia or cardiorespiratory arrest. Uh, in the other hand, single tentacle box jellyfish, they cause very mild pain. So sometimes they, are, they become unnoticed whether uh, the, the, the wound is very small or the pain is very minimal. But the delayed symptoms are uh, very life-threatening because they can cause cardiac arrhythmia, arterial, pulmon arterial pulmonary hypertension, as well as pulmonary edema. So uh, for multi tentacle, they will cause uh, skin necrosis, skin blistering, and uh, even a, a very bad uh, systemic effect such as uh, respiratory distress. And uh, in special population like children, the severity of amenomenia is uh, dose dependent. So the smaller the child are, the more likely they will receive a potentially lethal dose of the venom. And we know that uh, in jellyfish, there's no antivenom because it's too broad. Uh, we are not able to uh, actually envenom, uh, to find any antivenom. For single tentacle box jellyfish, the clinical presentation uh, include a very small and local pain, but the general systemic effect can be variable and it occurs around 30 minutes post sting. And uh, the most fatal one is the Irukanji syndrome. Irukanji syndrome was described in uh, 1952 in Australia. Uh, where the two swimmers, uh, it, it was named after the death of two uh, Aboriginal uh, Inu Kanji people who died when after swimming in the Australia uh, Queensland. Um, it was found that during the cardiac autopsy, there's a very bad, severe uh, cardiac uh, necrosis, cardiac muscle necrosis, and hence it was named as Inu Kanji syndrome. So, uh, Irukanji syndrome uh, causing very bad, uh, very bad uh, myogia, back pain, abdominal cramping, and the dreadful thing is that uh, this Irukanji uh, uh, species of uh, jellyfish will cause is a left ventricle dysfunction, uh, severe cardiac arrhythmia, and even causing a sudden cardiac death. Uh, this is a, a, a poster posted by this Prof Kaudun. Uh, he is an uh, EP who actually uh, specific in uh, toxicology where he involved in a lot of, uh, I think I'm not sure in KL, but uh, in Penang, we have a, a, a good WhatsApp group with him and he's a very dedicated person who actually uh, keep uh, want us to update him about the patient, whether it's a snake bite or whether it's a jellyfish sting and he can provide a very good ad advice. So this is a paper that he, he actually published a few years ago with the UMS with the UNS team. So, um, avoid areas where jellyfish are known to occur and uh, created the signboard to increase awareness and uh, he proposed that wear protective clothing that covers the whole body when you're going to swim in a, in a sea that uh, known to have a jellyfish. And uh, a lot of belief whether you want to, uh, what is the immediate uh, treatment when you are at the seaside, when you notice that you are being stung by a jellyfish, to vinegar or not to vinegar? Of course, a lot of uh, experts' opinions saying that vinegar is good because uh, due to its acetic acid content, it can help to neutralize and also uh, inhibit the stinging cell discharges. But bear in mind, um, there are not every species of box jellyfish uh, responded to vinegar. For instance, if you are bite, you are actually sting by this blue bottle uh, jellyfish, it can actually stimulate uh, the discharges and cause more pain. So in terms of uh, if you are actually being stung by this uh, blue bottle jellyfish, so better not use the vinegar, but instead you can rinse with the seawater and then remove the microscopic stinging uh, cells. Uh, the, in this uh, poster, he proposed uh, no fresh water or no alcohol should be poured on the area and no scrapping with sands. This is another paper uh, published by Penang, uh, Penang Hospital because last year, I think uh, PICU also uh, received one of the patient post jellyfish sting and uh, developed hypertension and cephalopathy and being intubated. And at the same time, the child also developed a local vasospasm and it responded to iloprost. 
Um, uh, there are not many patients, uh, not many people talk about uh, jellyfish and venomation, especially uh, in terms of extremities ischemia. So this is the latest uh, case report uh, published in Qatar Hospital, and they did a systemic review of uh, uh, cases that being presented over the years, not more than 20, uh, and they look at one by one. So the paper that this uh, Qatar people presented, they actually treated the patient with steroids, uh, heparin, uh, topical GTN, as well as alopros. And uh, the outcome is good. You can see superficial skin necrosis with re -epitalization. And the patient regained full hand function and no need any surgical intervention. There's another patient, uh, uh, there's another paper published by Lowe and friends, uh, whereby they also treated with alopros and topical GTN. And uh, they can see a good reperfusion happened after the alopros infusion. And the pulses was restored after third day of uh, alopros infusion. Um, the fifth uh, paper is by Chung, uh, was talking about the forehand and arms necros uh, extremities necrosis, whereby they only started the patient on heparin, and the outcome is not good. Uh, there is permanent uh, skin discoloration, and the patient needs fasciotomy. And a few more papers also talking about uh, treatment only with heparin uh, infusion, whereby all the patient needed fasciotomy or surgical debridement. Um, back to back in year 1988, uh, Williamson actually presented a paper talking about severe uh, articular rash and shock together with upper limbs and lower limb ischemia. So he actually also tried on uh, ilopros, but the ilopros was started at day 10 after the, the patient developed extensive ischemia. So uh, the patient that he presented had a poor long-term uh, recovery and also needed uh, fasciotomy and debridement. Um, so uh, the proposed pathophysio or uh, why this vaso, uh, why the ischemia happened is uh, include vasospasm, uh, platelet aggregation, uh, vasculitis, free radicals damage, and activation of compl complement cascade and microthromboembolic -thrombo insults, which lead, uh, which actually uh, caused by the venom. So um, uh, we want to get a satisfactory outcome in this very rare but potentially uh, very debilitating presentation require uh, evidence-based and algorithmic uh, approach with all the inputs from, from EP level to toxicologist and to the surgeon. But it's very clear that from this literature review, there is no absolutely consensus exists among uh, the cases and uh, we, we are not sure how best to manage this kind of presentation. And of course, we need to uh, we need more studies to propose an algorithmic approach to this kind of patient. So a little bit of ilopros. Ilopros is a synthetic analog of uh, uh, prostaglandin two. It's a potent but very short life uh, uh, um, medication, mainly produced in vascular endothelium. So they have uh, uh, ilopros have a vasodilatory effect and has been used by the vascular surgeon for more than twenty years and also used by our cardio colleague as an inhalation ilopros for those patients with pulmonary hypertension. Apart from a potent but short-life vasodilatory effect, ilopros also inhibits the platelet aggregation and improves the abnormal vascular reactivity. Common side effect is vasodilatation effect like a flushing, a coughing, as well as a very severe hypotension. So uh, what we practice in Penang, uh, if you have a jellyfish-induced severe digital ischemia, you can try on IV alopros infusion, where the recommended dose was adjusted according to patient tolerance. You can start slow by 0.5 nanogram per kilo per minute over a three, period, uh, over a three hours of time, and then you slowly increase to 1, then 1.5, followed by maximum dose of 2. And uh, this is on the day one. Then the second day, you can, if there's no, not much of complication that you experience on the first day, the next day, you can start off with two. And uh, depending on the progress of the patient, if there's improvement after a week, and you can see, uh, you can see improvement in terms of the pulses and the ultrasound Doppler findings, and uh, you can slowly titrate off and winning over another one week time. 
so after this patient incident, we had actually reported the case to Jabatan Perikanan Pulau Pinang and uh, they actually took a very serious action. They put up a signboard in the Penang uh, Batu Ferengi there and they actually uh, 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 go to the Batu Ferengi and caught a lot of jellyfish. These are the pictures taken by them uh, during the, the action the other day. So uh, this is the patient's photo before he was discharged. All the swellings are gone. Uh, all the digits are salvaged. You can see the index fingers are, are still uh, dusky. La. But then the necrosis tissue actually is already like separated. It's peeling off from the skin. And we can see actually beneath there, there is a re happening. So uh, we are very hopeful whether uh, we can actually see more new skin coming. And uh, we are going to see him back in a week after Chinese New Year leave. And... Uh, uh, any question from the floor? Thanks a lot, Ling. Yeah, it's a very fantastic uh, presentation because I have not encountered uh, one patient before. <laughs> any questions? Can I open the floor? So the myth of uh, uh, putting on urine into the into the uh, sting sites uh, is 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 no evidence based, right? It's no evidence base. It's be just because of acidity, acidity of the urine. That's why the myth of a uh, pouring urine and the urine is the only thing, the immediate thing that you can get when you are in the seaside. Uh. Because not every seaside have this vinegar uh, and and the sideboard. The picture that I took uh, just now was actually the picture from Australia. I, I'm not sure Doctor Asmo is here or not, but I think he can share his experience. Whether the Australian people, how they treat the uh, jellyfish thing? Hello, I'm here. Yes, uh, there's a lot of... Um, um, uh, every beach in Australia has this surf life saving club and they always have this um, vinegar available. Lah. Basically, vinegar is a uh, weak acid. Um, that It's an acid, not so weak. Um, that can neutralize the um, jellyfish thing. And there's a lot of jellyfish which is... Um, uh, in, in Australian waters and some of them are actually deadly like the Urukanji syndrome but most of them just produce this uh, type of uh, problems uh, whenever there's uh, jellyfish stung onto the patient. But why, why they say do not rub? Because the tentacles are uh, usually the the jellyfish will leave the tentacles uh, like pots of uh, this venom skin. So when you rub the small pots into the skin, more venom will come out. So you don't rub, you just pour and wash so that the, um, the venomous pots just wash up from the skin. But if you rub it on, so you will promote more pots to be injecting more venom into the skin. Okay. So, so you just pour the vinegar and leave it there and then go to medical yeah. attention? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and get medical attention. Do not rub. Okay. So what do, would they do in the in the they, they go and plug, is it? Plug out one by one. If they can see the, the thing, they can, they will plug it one by one, yes. In ED. But I haven't encountered anything in ED, now, but the, 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 uh, the, what is the advice is they will plug it out now, if they can see. How about hot water? Hot water, that one I'm not sure, but it doesn't, um, no, 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 no advice on that, nah, Dr. Cho. Okay. Hot water is only for this blue bottle, uh, spe a specific species of jellyfish. I guess the blue bottle is a very big kind of spe uh, species. Whereas the iru kanji is a very tiny species that is, normally is barely can be seen. I see. All right. So no urine. Huh? <laughs> okay. hey, but urine do any harm or not? Uh, Prof Gan, there's no one study about the urine uh, by far. Lah. Oh, I see. I think, I think Prof Gan and Dr. Cho, the uh, urine is actually a weak acid if you can acidify the urine. So there is some explanation to that, lah, but it's not as strong as your vinegar in terms of the acids. Okay. Yeah. So if we, when there's no vinegar, then you know probably that's the best you can use, eh? 
You can try lah. There's no. <laughs> Acid and warm. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> so in 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 Australia, uh, uh, do you come across a very bad uh, 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 jellyfish thing? And then what 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 do they do? No, no, I haven't I haven't come across any bad jellyfish thing in Australia when I was there when I was working in. Uh, in 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 the people, uh, but there is a actually a, a a an interesting case of uh, a paralyzing tick um, um, toxic uh, a, a girl who was like seven years six or seven years old uh, suddenly uh, presented with um, acute paralysis can't breathe so need to be intubated and it turned out to be from a para- paralytic uh, tick. Mm. Thanks. So Liling, uh, besides alloplos, uh, any other uh, medication that can be used? Uh, because since you're saying that alloplos is quite difficult to get, can can like uh, prostaglandin, other prostaglandin, or or labetalol, which is a vasodilator, or sodium hypoproside can be used uh, for for this type of uh, illnesses. Mm, so far, uh, none of the you know, the the medication that you mentioned are used so far. Uh, nobody had tried that before. Um, but GTN is another method uh, that had been used to actually improve the circulation. And GTN patch is actually easily available. Mm, yeah, because uh, since I think that this your patient also has hypertension, right? As you mentioned. The hypertension yeah. and vessel constricted. So whether yeah. uh, uh, so like a uh, beta blocker, uh, have you kind of across any study on that? Uh, uh, no. Yeah. no, no, no one had used beta blocker uh, so far. Mm-hmm. Uh, some patient, uh, one of the paper talking about intra uh, intra arterial urokinase. But uh, in that few paper, they also show very poor. You're breaking it, uh, Lily. Uh, sorry. Uh, You're breaking just now. Yeah. Is it? Uh, um, so, one a few paper. We lost you again. <laughs> We lost you, Lily. Can you hear us? You have not unmuted yet. Lily? Anyone else have uh, experience? Uh, with this uh, the jellyfish. Dr. Cho, this is my first experience as well that we think this oh, okay. are, are this this um are they not severe renal phenomenon post jellyfish thing like, because I haven't come across uh renal phenomenon post jellyfish thing. Um it's new to me and the treatment modalities that they uh instituted in Penang was also Mm. new so mm. uh, i haven't used alloprost at all before mm. uh, and you see it's working even you can see the um, effect uh immediate not immediately now, but a few hours after we started the alloprost but i think in the earlier part of the man- management because we're not sure how long and what's the uh, maximum dose that we have to go with. Mm. <laughs> um, so yeah. that's why um there were the, the alloprost was stopped in the for a few hours and then restarted back again. Okay. But eventually the patient um, did regain full um, um, function of the uh, limbs. <laughs> okay. okay. So does it need to go through a central line, the Elopros or the peripheral line would it? No, no, we, we did uh, we did a peripheral line. Oh okay. okay. Yeah. Does the patient have quite significant hypotension of the Elopros? Uh no hypotension but hypertension. Mm-hmm. We even had uh, a few incidents of uh, because the hypertension 
was quite significant systolic pressure of more than 150 that we gave a dose of nifedipine. Uh, at, at that time also patient was um, complaining of a bit of fatigue. So. <laughs> I see, I see. And I think the hypertension, as you mentioned, is because of the renal phenomenon the vessel constriction is like the body try to uh, push the blood uh, supplying to the uh, extremities. So that's why it tends to become hypertensive. And it's, it is one of the um, complete you know, uh, side effects associated with the jellyfish itself, I think. Mm, okay. And, and you see that this patient, the symptom presented much later, right? Yes, no. after after uh, after three days of uh, the patient was discharged from uh, seeing in the clinic. Hmm. I see. Okay, it's quite interesting. I mean, it's a delay response. Huh? Yes, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Because the uh, because the venom itself uh, stays in the body for quite some time. I see. I see. Okay. Yeah. What, what did the parent do at the time in the sting? Did No paper also, uh, Prof Gan, about me, we non. Oh, okay. For yeah. symptomatic, uh, like antihistamine, steroid, all this will help, right? Uh, it's for immediate uh, reaction, but uh, for the vasospasm part, it won't help. Oh. Uh, uh, in the literature review, few people talking about antihistamine as well as steroid. Uh, uh, there's uh, no. Uh, Liling, you you un can you unmute yourself? Yeah. Huh? Uh, yeah. Yes, no, you did not unmute yourself. Yeah, we will lost you oh, just. Now. Oh, is Oh, uh, I mean, uh, Nirinon, there's no study. And then, uh, uh, even some of the paper talking about intra intra-arterial urokinase or also uh, no promising outcome. So the meaning that the, the pathogenesis is more towards vasospasm, right? The local vasospasm. Yes. Local vasospasm, yeah. You, you, you have just now show us the uh, the summary of a few of the uh, case report. Mm. Okay, right. it's quite interesting that they have using uh, a lot of different different uh, modality. Yeah. Mm. And, because uh, we, we don't have a, a specific like guideline or specific uh, algorithmic approach yeah. what to do when you're having this type of patient. Yeah. But it's just a lot of case reports. Uh, so sharing of what they have done and what is the outcome. Mm, okay. So the, the, the best outcome are still using the IV prostaglandin mm. and uh, also with capillary infusion because uh, one of the pathophysio is a thromboembolic event. Mm. Mm. Okay, right. So at the first aid site is first of all to kill the whatever leftover tentacle that is active by using the, the vinegar. Then after that, uh, do not scrap it and then go to the clinic to pick it up. Then subsequently, then you are dealing with this muscle spasm and then subsequently might leading to hypertension and ischemia lips. Is yeah. that a common presentation? Uh, it depends on which type of jellyfish you can. Because most of the jellyfish are actually very benign and they have mild symptoms of itchiness and uh, pain, but they won't cause a very severe muscle spasm. Mm, okay. Mm. Is it, it is no antivenom yet, right? There's no anti venom yet. From from my reading, Doctor Cho, mm -hmm. um, it's difficult to get an anti uh, to to synthesize an anti venom for mm -hmm. uh, for jellyfish because there's a lot of 
species and most of the species uh it's difficult to uh to be recognized once they are out of the water oh, kind of thing but okay. but blue bottles are are common but there are a lot of other um uh, stinging jellyfish that is mm. available but the thing is that too many species that's mm. why the uh production or the synthesis of uh, the anti venom is quite difficult i see okay, okay. right good so the one that in uh, for your patient is what what which species in Penang? We, we are not sure okay <laughs> Yeah, we, we also don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but there are more and more cases because uh, Penang uh, beach are more and more polluted. Oh, I see. I see. Okay. So we are seeing more and more patients like this. Okay. Oh, water more polluted, jellyfish can live better. <laughs> yeah, they, can, they got more things to eat. <laughs> oh, I see. So the from that, if you look at the uh, jellyfish um, biological uh, evolution, not biological evolution, but the uh, life cycle of uh, jellyfish, it's quite interesting because it started off with like a polyp, and then the polyp just uh, there is trigger um, that releases uh, the jellyfish from its polyp, and then it becomes a single jellyfish. That trigger they say is because of the polluted water. Yeah, are they oh. asexual, yeah. sexual punya cycle? Initially, they become poly, like almost like uh, your sea anemone, ataupun uh, your um, apa tu, uh, corals, and then it uh, detaches off from the coral and becomes a a um, jellyfish. Hmm. So, kan, water is clear and pristine, it becomes like coral ataupun sea anemone, lah. Like, it doesn't go off and float into the water. But then, if your pol water polluted, it triggers off that uh, them to release, and then they become like individual jellyfish. Mm. So this jellyfish will they clean up the all this uh, polluted stuff in the, uh, in the sea? They makan all those plankton and uh, fish lah. They make some filter, kan? But some oh. some of the fish are actually. Uh, carnivorous as well. They makan uh, ikan besar juga. So it depends. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Interesting. Good. Yeah, this is very interesting case. Yeah, thanks. Thanks a lot, Lily. Lily, can you later on share your slide and also uh, the article that you have read through? Yeah, because it's a thing that we we seldom encounter. Yeah. <laughs> sure. 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 Maybe yeah. from Ghana, your slang or sea also polluted. You have <laughs> <laughs> no, la, I think the I think Penang, uh, uh, <laughs> those very dirty on like uh, Morib, I don't see jellyfish there, but you go to Tioman, go to uh, Rera. Rerang, I think. Rerang Tao, yeah. Rerang, mm, huh? Yeah, I think they, they, they do have lah, jellyfish. Yeah, Langkawi lah, next time for Hasliani. Reference for Hasliani. Mm. Oh, Hasliani got experience lah. Where is Hasliani? Hasliani? I don't know. Yeah, good, good. yeah, Hasliani, what's your experience? Yeah, I never encountered a jellyfish <laughs> like that. Like, like, but previously, I think during my Housemanship in uh, assessment in Langkawi. I did uh, saw the same thing with this. Uh, but my very my concern because of jellyfish, the foreigners came to me because of the jellyfish, but they have been discussed as an operation on this because of the my concern. I don't know what happened later on. Okay. Right. Yeah. Fantastic. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. One more time, uh, uh, Liling, for this uh, interesting and you know, presentations. And yeah, we have learned quite a lot of new things here. Yeah, thanks a lot for the rest of the sharing as well as Sammy as well. So um, yeah, mm -hmm. uh, Liling, you you please uh, uh, share the slide and then are you okay for me to upload your your presentation in the YouTube? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. Thanks. Okay. Can can. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Uh, don't try and forget. Thanks Thank for the. 
Bye. Thank uh, you. Thanks for sharing. I will see you next week. Okay, thank you. Okay. Bye. Bye. Bye.